In this film we're looking at how we used certain techniques for skin fixing and as you can see uh, this girl uh, dancer she's got a, a bad day as far as acne is concerned and so on it's no big deal but obviously it's going to be some work um, before I show the images to a client I wouldn't do all the work they obviously know um, that we're going to actually do some post-production work so the first thing would be to open it up through uh, from the raw file and if I needed to give a little bit of um, uh, kind of encouragement to her when she was coming in for the viewing I'd need to actually at least show one image how much work as a basic we're going to be doing so a couple of main tools we're going to be using the uh, spot healing brush is the key one in fact so um, all I need to do here is basically just wipe across um, the the kind of the zip zapping element uh, and you can go to town on this so you've got to be care careful how much work you're doing uh, but of course you know we we all have these days as teens so we've just got to make sure if we're going to offer a service um, of professional photography that we also have a level of professional uh, skin retouching to a basic level we're not on about high fashion stuff but just kind of clicking my way through it so that's the first thing that I'm doing here as you can see it's just quite a small brush um, would be easier if I was using the pen and tablet um, but I'm not today I'm just I'm just using the mouse and I just be going through the image to make sure I got all the kind of the basic elements there so I've got some other little parts that I need to correct around by the nose here and obviously on the top part of the nose I can still fix by the spot healing brush anyway um, but I think I need a little bit more control down by the nose and down by actually on the lip here with a very dry skin before we need to add some softening into the overall effect so once I've done the basic um, as it zap in I can then go to the patch tool and by just selecting around the patch tool itself I can then actually just drag it across to a similar toned uh, area and basically to get rid of some of the rougeness um, as the kind of the heavy spot and things really that we've got here um, and basically this will just allow us to just take a little bit of the the hot the hotness away from the image itself and things really so um, we've got a little bit of very dry skin here as well on the neck this is where the patch tool this is where the patch tool really comes into its own just kind of dragging around it as I said much quicker with a pen tablet um, because you literally just draw a uh, drawing across it and then moving straight uh, straight away and then just check in the other parts of the body so back into the spot healing brush again mark wrong one um, so just going through there going across the other side anything the trouble is when you start to do one part you then to do another so I was fully aware with this girl uh, she has really bad case of uh, dry skin uh, come up every now and again it's got to be done of course so again, still the zit zap in to begin with before we then get the patch tool. And then we kind of just use that for the color um, correction from the red, uh, the redness. Just going down back through the image. And there is no quick fixes in retouching. I think that's the one thing that you learn. But of course, when you come from the days of film like I, like I do, uh, you realize how much we can do and it's almost costing us nothing to kind of get it uh, done whereas these kind of things would have been just like a, a dream uh, in my early, my early career as such really coming to an end again back into the zit zapper spot healing brush sorry So as you've seen, I tend to work clockwise around an image to make sure that I can, um, well, I make sure that I pick all the bits up really, otherwise I'm just bouncing back and forth all over the place with no structure uh, to what I'm doing. The face, I tend to just work a little bit at a time in different areas. And by doing that, then at least it gives me some kind of symmetry of what I want to actually look at the face with and things really. 
there we go it's pretty much done okay so from a really bad case of dry skin for the day we're pretty close to uh, getting ready to actually add some just softening over the roll so good news is that she's got lots of freckles all all over the place which means when i'm patching it basically is picking up some of the freckle from the uh, new location anyway um, i'm just going to soften down those eyes okay that's a bit too much there as you can see yeah so it's at this pay, uh, time for the first time i'm going to create a new layer as you can see i didn't even create a new layer before because i'm so used to actually working fast um, that we're trying to make sure that we're not just actually creating loads and loads of layers for the sake of uh, the sake of it but now I really do need to create the new layer so all I've got to make sure is that from the patch layer here so you can see I can't do uh, do that that's because obviously the source isn't the same yeah so let's Control D to deselect that. And I'll show you the quick tip that I do. So at this point, all I do is Control J, duplicate the layer, then actually finish the patch at this point. So I don't have to worry about blending or the amount that I'm actually kind of taking out of it at this stage at all. So I know at this point, I'm going to actually reduce down the opacity in my layer. So that is why up until this point I haven't had to worry about the um, blending modes and things really because I just needed to get rid of the real rougeness of the image itself let me just get rid of that one as well and um, because now what I'm going to do is basically start to actually just reduce the opacity down because I like a little bit of the imperfection but not the problem. So the imperfection is around the eyes, the bags and the tiredness and so on. A little bit of the skin texture going through. We still need to do a little bit um, as far as the nose is concerned here. But at this point, I go shift control alt e This is basically shift control alt e creates uh, a new layer based on what is visible. So this is vis1. Okay, and this is kind of last re retouch, which I know is basically just all the bags under the eyes and so on. I still need to correct here though along this nose. So again, once more, small smaller brush and just start to edge down that Just the nor the normal part here for a minute. Just uh, change the opacity. So this is the clone stamp tool. Just beginning to actually lose that rougeness there. Same on the other side as well. Just going to do exactly the same thing here. Same thing. Just below the lip. Just a touch. Once more. Just on that edge in. So with our kind of basic image to, uh, uh, to begin with, um, we're getting very close to adding just a softness to the image itself. So once more, back in the spot, healing brush. Okay, good. Please, with that, I think I'm going to just lighten her face just a little bit. So at this this point, just going to grab the dodge tool and just make it very large. I just want to do just here. Um, it's going to be the mid-tones I'm going to affect, and it's just around about 20%. The reason being, she's got very, very pale skin um, on the rest of the bo body. So if you can just see, uh, let me just take it back we'll create a new layer for you so you can see the diff uh, the difference let's come back here again and just add the percentage again 
So all that looks like now, I've added a little bit of reflector on towards the face. That's all That's all I'm doing, yeah? So if I just do the before and after of just that image, you can see why I've just brightened the face to match the rest of the body. Because if I just zoom out, so I always find it important to zoom out from an image. If we look at the difference now, you can see how the face looked dark compared to the rest of the body. So now I've brought, even before I soften, I've brought a natural lightness and brightness to the whole image. So with, with this in mind now, I'm ready to go soft. So I can just go Control J to duplicate that top layer. So this is gonna be called soft. I'm just going to go into filter, blur, a Gaussian blur. So I just want enough to lose detail. So here we go. It's just enough there, I think. Four, 2.8, fine. Now I'm just going to actually change the blend, load, uh, blend mode to soft light. Possibly go to screen effect. Change the opacity to about four forty percent. There we go. And now all I need to do is create the mask. So I'm just going to basically uh, create a inverted mask. So I'm just going press the alt key. <laughs> idiot um, and once more what I'm going to do is BDX I want to put white on top so pressing the X again I'm just going to paint through the face now to actually create the white smaller brush just on a, a little bit of the arms and you can see the pattern that is beginning to actually unfold on the mask of where I'm painting. So it's on the face more that I'm going to need to soften and lighten. But I'm just going to press X again to put black on top, shrink, shrink it down, darken these eyes just a little bit, darken the lips just a little bit more as well. Same just in the nos, uh, the nost, the nostril. And I'm also going to just make sure the top of the strap neckline is strong as well. Good. So if we look at the image as far as the basic retouching is concerned, and we go back and we just let's just uh, save that for a minute. So this is just retouching. We'll go back to um, bridge, open that one, that same image again. Open it. And then I'll just, just for before and af after, I'll just drag that on top so you can see what it's like. So this is our image where we were and this is the image where we are now. But the good news is we still have full texture as far as the uh, freckles are concerned and things really, yeah? So it's still there, that's the key thing. So the before and the after, and it's just not the light, uh, the lightning, it's all the work that we did there in those kind of step-by-step -step steps. So just as a, re a recap, do the kind of the zit zapping first, just you using the spot healing brush tool um, then basically go through the patch tool. But for me, as I said, I duplicate the layer once I've got the retouching done. And then I actually do the uh, patch tool element. So at this point, we're patch tooled. And don't, don't forget, I'm reducing the opacity down to show some of the texture coming through. We created a visible layer of the um, two below then, so as they merge together. Then I began to... Um, uh, duplicate that and we created the uh, effect then we added in our softness our Gaussian blurring just actually going through here and then of course this is the original um, 
layer as such really so that's what we would have looked like so a big difference between the two and once you go into the flow of that that's probably about two or three minutes worth of work um, if you don't have to explain like I was doing in the step-by-step -step then